Hello, Kentucky. Our usual Saturday night, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live stream on the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and the mighty Led Zeppelin. We don't got our buddy here. And uh, Sticker Kid's not here this week. Hopefully he will be back next weekend. I'm here. Abbey Road. We got an Abbey Road poster back there. And I forgot to show, ran out of time last week, forgot to show the sign. Abbey Road by Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. Not too many of these in the world. Big, nice Paul McCartney up in the light blue sky. He did it 2006. He autographed it. Frank Casio has a COA. He was uh, in LA doing uh, the minefield when he was married to Heather as some, uh, and, um, and uh, autograph person got this that always was waiting for them to come out. Got Paul McCartney to sign this cover and then Ringo signed this later on that year in 2006 when he was on tour. Somebody I know on Rachel Ghost channel wanted to buy it. Novus Nick said hello, Frank. Novus Nick, you're in earlier today. It was, the cover was signed during Paul's 2005 North American tour. Out in Los Angeles. How's it going, Novus Nick? Everybody like, subscribe, and hit the notification link. We're up to 1,300 subscribers. 1,301, I think. 1,311. 1,311. I've been corrected. All right, I forgot to show that last time. You got to see it. Talk about a few things for start showing. I got a quite a lot of stuff this week. Here's my plea to anybody out there watching that used to work at Capitol Records factories in the mid 60s when the butcher cover debacle happened. I would like to interview. I know you'd be in your 70s, but if there's anybody out there watching this, get a hold of me through my Mr. Underscore Sticker Mania at Yahoo.com. I would love to interview if you were working that weekend when all the butcher covers were either destroyed or pasted over. Novus Nick said, I just got my first copy of Meet Up the Beatles. Not a great copy, but I have it. Meet the Beatles? Yep. I uh, didn't bring my Behind the one of them. Behind her, there's one on the, but I don't know which one it is, but there is one over there. Where? On the floor. One, one. Oh, did you put it? It's under the table now. Meet the Beatles. Oh, that's a with the Beatles. Oh, okay, my fault. I thought that was that one. Nope. You gotta meet the Beatles. This is a, um, bought a collection that has a first, um, 1960, just a 1963 pressing. From the United Kingdom and the original Inner Sleeve. Probably a third or fourth pressing. It's a 7N, 7N on the Matrix, a mono. It came in these original Polyline Emetix um, Inner Sleeves. These laminated, they're real thin and real fragile. This didn't hold up too good. I got one that did hold up real good. There's a Hard Day's Night, a 1964 pressing, a mono from the United Kingdom with 
quite a bit of wear. It's a um, minus uh, 3N, 3N matrix. But I'll show you a UK original that really held up. Nova's Nick said it's a mono and I like it a lot. On the Meet the Beatles, yeah, because on the uh, Meet the Beatles, the stereo, a lot of them were um, reprocessed uh, stereo, kind of fake stereo. He also said, wow, that's big time, Hark. What is? I guess the with the Beatles you were showing. Uh -huh. And then Christopher Cordova said, any German BC-13 pressings coming up? We have... <laughs> Coming up about halfway through, boom, 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 boom. And I have a rubber sole coming too. <laughs> okay. KRWD said, hi Frank, love the treasures. All right. This is a original 1976 United Kingdom Sgt. Pepper laminated cover. Real thin and unbelievable condition. How somebody stored and put this away and it has no wear after 50, what would we be up to? 50, uh, 67, 57 years. That is just amazing. Look at that lamination, that laminated cover. They made, never made them in the United States like that. I have a, a 3D 20th anniversary cover or poster 3D coming from Canada, uh, 36 inch by 24 inch. I'll have it for next Saturday. It'll take up most of that wall there. It is pretty sharp. Never seen one, but I got a hold of it. We got a first press stereo with a T, a KT um, stamp on the middle of the label there. Did that on the early pressings, a tax stamp. And um, it's a 1967 pressing, one in, one in, or dash one, dash one. Gotta get these matrices right, because uh, PB Thaw screwed up on one of his on Steve Westman's the other day, he said, 2U, 1U on Abbey Road, and it's minus 2, minus 1 on the first pressings of Abbey Road. But this is a first pressing, and it's got Day in the Life listed on the second label. I've had the 68 pressing before where the Day in the Life wasn't shown. It was on the record, but it wasn't on the label because the BBC uh, was banning the song uh, Day in the Life. That's amazing original issue. Christopher Cordova said sweet, and Nova's Nick said beautiful. Beautiful. KRWD said those crazy Brits defacing art with a tax stamp. Yeah, well, they just put it on the middle of the label. This is a mono, 1967. Not as good a shape as that stereo one from the United Kingdom. So I got a mono and a stereo, and John Lennon said the way to hear, you haven't heard Pepper until you've heard it in mono. All right, back to the butcher. This is the one I peeled a few nights ago. Came out in very good plus condition. I had a, some problems there on the right edge. You just never know when you peel one of these what's going to happen. But the corners came out really good. And their faces, the Beatles' faces. It's a number three uh, Scranton. Got the trunk slick off in one piece with just a few uh, tears there on the edges. Tough to get it off like that. I got this Monkeys album to protect it. This is the rare Monkeys album that's got the um, beards. The very uh, first issue of Monkeys Headquarters.
headquarters and they realized maybe the monkeys shouldn't be shown with beards. They were trying to imitate the beetles there, I think. So then they quickly changed the cover where they didn't have beards. All right, let's put that away. Frank, I think you're gonna get in trouble. You didn't record the peeling. We didn't record the peeling, no, but I'm... Tell them you'll do one soon. One's going off in three days. And if you can believe this, a Goodwill took in a butcher cover a pasted over second state butcher cover and didn't even know it was a butcher cover, but three or four of us have already figured it out. It'll be a bidding war in about three days. I'll get a hold of it. We will film the next one. The problem with butcher covers, I'm 70 years old and I don't want to lose that touch and my fingers are peeling ones. So about every couple weeks, I think it's time to peel another one. I think I've peeled about 110 of them so far. You mentioned that it is sold. Yeah, it uh, put this up uh, for 15 or yeah, 1500, and I took a best offer of 1444, and it sold the first um, 12 hours I put it up for sale. There's All right, here's a Gary Hines story about butcher covers. You guys all know who Gary Hines is, Beatles for me, the late Gary Hines. Always had a, uh, was always at the fest for Beatle fans, and uh, he was a professional pill on East Coast and West Coast butcher covers. About the last uh, six months of his life, he called me once. He, he used to call me or email me and we talked for about an hour. We probably talked with him an hour on the phone, probably five or six times. But he had uh, a Chinese man entrepreneur wanted 150 second state butcher covers and Gary Hine was asking me to help him buy them up. They could be West Coast or East Coast. So I helped for Gary about a week and I, I got a commission on every one that I got for him but uh, after about a week uh, the Chinese uh, entrepreneur decided that he was going to buy him his own so Gary said uh, quit looking for him it's not going to happen anymore but I, I did a couple of them that was a Gary Hines story but uh, one time I bought a big uh, estate auction it was a big storage unit, um, those great big storage units that you see out in California. Dave Barry, the, uh, the author and the humorist, he had all his Beatle albums in one of those big storage units and somehow he lost it. And uh, somebody from San Francisco got a hold of it. And uh, it went up on eBay and I offered him uh, $800 for all these Beatle albums. And the seller said, I'll take a thousand. And so I bought it. And um, when I got it, I couldn't believe it. There were sealed Beatle albums from the 64. There was a Let It Be box set from the United Kingdom still in the shrink. And it was just an amazing collection. But I talked to Gary Hine about an hour when I first got it in. And I was describing everything and Gary bought about four items out of four albums from that collection. He bought the sealed MGM uh, My Bonnie. I don't think I have one here right now. But um, Gary quoted when we were talking on the phone, he says, Frank, every dog has his day and I think you just had yours. But I, that $800,000 collection I ended up selling for about $7,000 within three weeks. So that was a pretty amazing collection. All right, we talked about that. Um, da, da, da. I, at the end, I'll tell you some of the things I got coming in. Here's another story. Uh, a couple days ago, Perry Cox had one of the BC-13s. Give me that BC-13 that's down there, the blue box. Perry Cox had one of these 1978s that were numbered.
Auburn. It was in a, a different color blue, and it was the very first uh, 3,000 issue, issued by Capitol Records. They imported it from England, and all the albums were sealed inside. And um, I won the auction. And then one of my mentors, my mentors that got me where I am are Tom Port and Perry Cox and Andrew from Polygram Auctions. They taught me the ropes. So Tom Port messaged me earlier today and he had already wanted me to give him a bundle deal on four of the sealed albums from this BC 13 collection box set that I got coming on Monday from Perry Cox. We haven't made a deal yet, but he wants uh, four of the uh, sealed 1978 pressings. Caesar said, hey, Frank and everyone. All right, Caesar. Caesar gave me good feedback on his uh, Dove Beatles. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Is that right? That's a, uh, this is a later version of Dove Beatles from Germany. Everyone give a thumbs up. All right, what I talked about the uh, Tom Port and Perry Cox, I bought that uh, box set from. Couldn't believe I got it at a decent price. I, I put it in a big bid, but the, some reason it went off late at night. Nobody else made a bid. And then I learned how the best Beatle audiophile pressings from Andrew from Polygram Auctions when he was really. Uh, showing all the best pressings a year or two ago. And Tom Port, I used to message him back and forth for the last two or three years and I learned all the, he loves the Beatles 1978 pressings that are uh, recut by Harry T. Moss. He thinks they are the bomb. KRWD said Par Parlogram Auctions guy said is great. Love his videos on YouTube. Yeah, he's the biggest Got to be the biggest Beatles channel on YouTube. Caesar said, yeah, Frank, hopefully my Beatles for Sale makes it home next week. Thanks for the sale. Beatles for Sale? They get a, a UK stereo from me? That's probably what he got. Yeah, the UK stereo. This is a German version. Before I get into all those other ones of Beatles for Sale. And you want to get the ones that have 072 in the prefix. Those are the ones that also, the uh, Germans asked for the master tapes and they made audiophile pressings of most all the Beatle albums. And uh, set certain and um, mostly from the um, late 1970s. You don't want to get the ones that start with 64 in the prefix. You want to get the ones, I'm going to tell you all my secrets, so I better be careful. You want to get the ones that say start with 072. They are the audiophile pressings. Let's see what the dead wax is on this one. You got a minus one, minus one. That's what you want. George Borden will tell you that's the audiophile pressing of Beatles for Sale. Such an underrated Beatles album. Joe Mayo was talking the other day about 10 Beatles songs he's tired of hearing, and I sent him a message. Every time I hear a Beatles song, I hear their magic in that song in a different way. I say I never get tired of hearing any of the Beatles songs. Daniel Castillo said, Andrew, encourage Paola. Encourage Paola? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, because he's advertising so much for you know half of us is it's about making money now but he used to have really good content I learned all about the uh, German pressing the BC 13s I learned so much from him and then Tom Porter I learned a lot about him about the uh, told you the late 70 pressings from England and he uh, told me which Sticky fingers to get a hold of, and which Led Zeppelin twos to get a hold of. And I have bought and sold many of those over the last two years. Daniel Castillo said, Andrew said vinyl collecting is not fun anymore. I know, he's kind of burnt out, and um, 
Perry Cox sent me a message. He's been uh, selling Beatles memorabilia for 45 years. He's kind of burnt out. I think he has a new price guide, Beatles price guide for American Records coming out uh, later this year, though. And Nova's Nick said, I don't see that BC-13 for sale on your site. I broke it down. Why? All the albums are listed separately. But what if they want the whole thing? No, we're not doing that. Oh, okay. It's better for him to sell it the other way. The sealed albums are all up there individually. They're all listed. I told you about the Sgt. Pepper display coming. It's going to be third, three feet by two feet. It's going to be amazing. 3Ds, you got the, the drums is the farthest out, and then you got the Beatles in the middle, and then you got the Sgt. Pepper cover behind it. Never seen one before. Monday I have a Beatles, another 1964 Beatles scrapbook coming. Where's that last scrapbook? Nova's Nick's at crying emoji. I got another uh, Beatles scrapbook coming, and in the middle of it, the pictures, they showed a whole label of a rare Beatles hairspray can in the middle of the scrapbook. So I'm hoping there's going to be, a, it's four pounds heavy, hoping I can, just like I did great on this one where the Beatles candlestick tickets were in the middle of it, I'm hoping... I do good on the one I get on Monday. Uh, Jumping Jack Flash story. Let's talk about that for a second. I got a promo Jumping Jack Flash from 1968 from the Rolling Stones, a picture sleeve and a promo record coming. Here's a little Jumping Jack Flash story. I'm sure you probably all know this, but at, at the premiere of the Jumping Jack Flash in 1968, when the Rolling Stones had a premiere a party, Paul McCartney walked into it, and he had acetate for Hey Jude. They played it once, the DJ there played it once, and then all of a sudden, everybody there wanted to hear Hey Jude, and they kept playing it over and over. Needless to say, Mick Jagger was pretty pissed at Paul McCartney before the end of the party. All right, put the scrapbook away. You want to see the German, you want to see these lunchbox. Let's talk a little bit about Beatles memorabilia. Oh, them are cute. I'm going to need that, uh, the thing put on the table. This? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fold it out. Okay. All right, this is my grill of Mer Beatles memorabilia I got last week. Got a 1965 in very good plus condition Beatles lunchbox made by Aladdin Industries in Nashville, Tennessee with a matching thermos. Unbroken glass bottle. A little bit of wear on the bottom, but pretty nice. Somebody on eBay has got a, um, one that's almost perfect up there. And I offered him $2,700 for it, and then he had it at 3,000 by it now, and I thought he would take it. And then, uh, I don't know if he got upset with me, he raised the, the buy it now to $4,000. What? The highest I've ever sold one for is, uh, I sold a set of these and a brunch bag for the girls. I sold them for $3,000. Were they nice? This is a 1968 original Aladdin Yellow Submarine. That's one of the nicest ones. Only one time I had one that was in that kind of condition. Got the clip in it for the thermos. And this thermos is in fantastic shape. Not here said I love the Beatles. Not here? Yeah, this starting. Not here. Love the Beatles. And then KRWD said yes, the act tapes wear out fast. No wonder Mick was mad. <laughs> and they played that acetate of Hey Jude, seven minutes, eleven seconds. They played it, who knows, 10, 20 times at that. Uh, and it was supposed to be all about the Rolling Stones, but all of a sudden it became about the Beatles. But the um, 
when when the Beatles were going to record that song, George Martin, the producer, and says, so kept telling Paul McCartney, you cannot put out a rock so single seven minutes long on the radio. And Paul McCartney pushed for it, and he says, you watch me. And Paul McCartney made sure it happened, and needless to say, you know, it's one of their biggest songs ever. That's why... Paul McCartney couldn't have died in 66. How could his replacement come up with Hey Jude? What if someone offered you $100 for both of them? $100? Yeah. <laughs> this is $1,100, <laughs> and this is $1,100. Please, I get that. You're, you're a little bit short on that. And did I show you all the sides of the lunchbox? This is one of the most collectible lunch boxes there is in the world because beetle collectors want it and lunch box collectors want it. And of course, then you, that just drives the price up. It goes up every year. It's one of those items that goes up in value every year like the butcher cover. Didn't you say there was no other lunch box that actually is valued? Like, is there any others that you can think of? In mint condition, this would be, uh, the most expensive, more expensive than Kiss, Star Wars, uh, Jetsons, any of the other ones. Uh, Alright, we need to put this away. Can I fold this? Yeah, fold it. Like it was over there again. Alright, here's another thing I got in this week. First time I've ever had a first press. Beatles from Liverpool box set. This is a, a late 1980 pressing rather than the, most of them were 1981 from England. And the difference is right here. There's a mistake here on this cover. Do you know what the mistake is? Let's see if anybody in our, out there that's watching can tell me what the mistake is on this cover. Look at it closely. It doesn't, you can see the mistake pretty quick. Anybody got an answer? The two. Is hmm? it the two? That's what, not here said the two. No, it's not the two. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you 10 more seconds. Anybody going to answer this? I'm not giving a butcher cover away, but anybody yeah. got the answer? Deborah said reversed. Yes, you got it. Reversed. Paul's playing the bass right-handed. John's playing the acoustic left-handed. It was a mistake only on the very first pressings from late 1980. And they quickly changed the, reversed the picture the way it should be. So this is pretty valuable, this one cover right here. And then, not here said, if Paul died in 1966, then how did Paul get a hold of when I'm 64? How did he get a hold of it? Yeah. Oh, because Paul wrote that when he was 14. Paul died? Uh, the rumor is that it was in a car crash. Oh, and his uh, MG... I remember. Uh, late, got upset uh, late 1966 and stormed out of the studio and had a girl in the car and supposedly uh, had a bad car crash and it got decapitated. And then... Nova Snake, the lunchbox thing. He oh, Novus Nick said, how much was that lunchbox? The blue box is up there for uh, $1,150, and the yellow submarine uh, will get up there tomorrow for the same price. $1,100? $1,150. KRWD said, I have that set on the recommendation from Parlogram. Mine came from Japan. I'm guessing so. Uh, the yeah. Liverpool? Yeah. It's his picture. I bet his picture's not reversed on that cover. Yeah, I bet it's not reversed. This is, I've had this box set 20 times. This is the first time I've ever had one where the picture was reversed. It's usually the other way around. I don't have one to show you right now, but I've sold plenty of them. If you look at my sold listings, you'll see the picture the way it's supposed to be. This was a, a mistake. Only on the very first issues, then somebody noticed it, and then they corrected it. Deborah Yeagley said, introducing the Beatles cover reversed also. 
Yes, introducing the Beatles in reverse. Might as well go to that next then. Then we'll go German pressing down. There's actually that. two more. You skipped the not hate one above the you didn't read that one. About Paul's not dead. Oh, said. not here so like Paul ain't dead, I think. Alright, now go for Steve. And then Daniel Castillo said, Do you agree with Don McLean's message in American Pie? I like that song. What's the message? Sergeant Pepper taught the band how to, how to play. Well, there's something in there the, uh, in the middle of that song. And then KRWD said, I will check my set, Frank. Not sure that is interesting. What is? The, uh, if it's the Japan, what you asked about the Liverpool. Is, theirs isn't reverse, right? Yeah, that's what he said. He's going to check his own oh, set. Yeah. All right, got this in today. We're talking about reverse picture on introducing the Beatles. This is the real deal. A stereo version 2 in the in-store baggie because these weren't uh, factory sealed back then. This is the way it was sold in a record store. Original price was $4.98 and it was discounted at $3.84. Really tough to get this cover with no wear down there at the bottom of Paul. Usually this is all rub wear right here. This has please please me on it instead of love me do. Got the original VJ add back inner sleeve. And got the excellent Harley Play condition. Original, you have to have Beatles above the spindle hole. You can see stereo on the label there. It's basically all true stereo, except for a couple songs. I know Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You aren't, but th that, they're not on this, so this could be all true stereo. I haven't listened to it yet, just got it today. Daniel Castillo said the message is rock being ruined by Brits on LSD. That's what he's saying in American Pie, that the message is the, the Brits run the rock by doing it on LSD. Gotcha. And then KRWD, well, do you agree with it then? With the message that they're saying in that song, what's your opinion on that? That's the the LSD? Yeah. Well, the Brits brought brought it on, yeah. They interviewed Paul McCartney about it, and he didn't want to admit it, but he did. He's, and he said, well, you're promoting this by interviewing me. But Paul McCartney was always pretty honest with the interviewers. He didn't hold them too much back. All right, you got a version two introducing the Beatles, and you got a version one. There's only about 20 of these in the world that are in this kind of condition says printed in the USA and look at that back you got the inner sleeve turned into the back cover so they didn't so a record buyer wouldn't know that love me do and PS I love you was on the record KRWD said wow neat album was VJ part of capital VJ was not part of Capital. That was a problem. Capital was was, uh, was suing VJ, but VJ didn't care because they were going broke anyway. They sold several million copies of Introducing the Beatles, but that's the actual version one with Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You and Stereo at the uh, 12 o'clock position. This is a... $5,000 album. Daniel Castillo said, American Pie is a patriotic song about staying true to American roots. Gotcha. Not, so, so that we're getting on the Beatles a little bit, on yeah. the Brits. Yeah. Not Here said, I love the White Album poster and postcards. That. No, that's a revolver. He's just talking about the the white album. When you have it, you get it. It comes with a poster and postcard. I don't know if he has one here, but the white album. You guys want to talk about the white album for a second? Always want to talk about the white album. 
We gotta get into these German pressings in a second here. I thought you guys wanted to see all these German pressings I had. All right. You got the four portraits. This is from a late 1969 pressing from the United Kingdom. You got the rare photo protector sheet that was mostly thrown away at the factory, but it ended up in some of the white albums. And you got the original poster from England. It's got the glossy. That's the only, only the originals had that glossy to it. Pretty fragile. And let's put that away. The mm -hmm. So in late 1969, they were still numbered, but they opened from the side. They didn't open from the top like I've had before, but I've sold all my top loaders. Got a laminated cover, numbered from England. All right, let's put the white album away. Hey, what do you say? Not here. Not here said my favorite album. What is white album? It's probably my favorite too. I heard uh, the Holland pressing. I played it all the way through last week that I sold. For $277, and I never heard the White Album sound so amazing before. Andrew from Polygram Auction said it won the shootout, and I can see why. Daniel Unbelievable. Daniel Castillo said, Thoughts on Revolution, song by Lennon. What is? Thoughts on Revolution, song by Lennon. Revolution number nine, or the Revolution number one? One or nine. But even on the uh, Holland Dutch pressing of the White Album, I thought the Revolution Number no. 9 was entertaining on that pressing. There is some music, if you really listen hard, besides all that other crazy stuff going on in the song. All right, we got to talk about the German pressings okay. and there are a bunch of other things. He said Revolution B-side of Hey Jude. Revolution, that's the rockin' version. Um, that's probably the best uh, version there is. It's kind of distorted, but that's the way John Lennon wanted it. One thing about the Beatles rockin' out, if you listen to the anthology uh, outtakes from Sgt. Pepper and the uh, 2000... Uh, the 50th anniversary, 2017, two CD set or two album set, all those outtakes of uh, Sgt. Pepper, those songs were rocking a lot more in the outtakes in the beginning, and it seemed like they toned it down a little bit before they released the album. Mm -hmm. But they were in the studio, they were a rocking band. Before you get into that, do these Daniel real quick. Castillo said he mentioned Char Chairman Mayo. Chairman? Yeah, Chairman Mail uh, in the song, yes. You can count me out, you can count me in. The, there's two different versions where he says it a little different. Brad Parnell said, have you ever heard Zeus cover of Eleanor Rigby? No, Eleanor Rigby, no. How you doing there, Brad Parnell? I saw you a couple of days ago at the grocery store. And Chris W. said hi. That's our employee there. I just saw him about an hour ago. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do these German pressings or I'm never gonna get to them tonight. Save your questions for about five minutes. Okay, you got to Please Please Me. This is a late 1970s German pressing with the same minus two, minus two matrix in the dead wax. The best pressing a please please me that exists in the world. They took the master tapes and they um, used less compression than they did in England and they made a rocking album of please please me. Just got that in today, near mint condition. You got a Sergeant Pepper from Germany with the 072 prefix. I can get it out here. That's what I told you to look for in those German pressings. 
You learned that from Andrew of Polygram Auctions. 072. This plays with a little more bass than um, the England, the UK version. And a little more bass from Paul McCartney on Sgt. Pepper isn't a bad thing. Because that what drives the record. And you know that Paul McCartney was one of the best bass players ever in rock and roll history. He, Matt here said, I really love the Apple logo in the center of records. Yeah. It's cool. All right, we got two Magical Mystery Tours. This is what Andrew from Polygram Auctions list is the best stereo audiophile pressing of any Beatles album that exists in the world. You used to be able to get these for less than $100, and now nice ones are all over $200. Oh my gosh. I've sold, uh, I think I sold a sealed one for over $300 a few months ago. This is the um, 1977 with the Apple, and it's got minus um, one matrix on the A side and minus three on the B side, all in true stereo. And this is the early 80s version, a DMM cut. And I haven't listened to either one of these yet, but they're beautiful shape. Nowhere to the cover at all. The original inner sleeve from Germany. Beautiful. Somebody collected all these German pressings. I bought them all. We got one more. I do have a rubber sole coming on Monday from Germany. This is the, what Andrew from Polygram Auctions, I think I said this in the last live stream, what he says is the best stereo pressing that exists of Revolver. With the, F, o, the 072 and the prefix. The matrix numbers on this one are A1 and B1. All right, I gotta put these away. I'll listen to them this week. Pretty amazing collection of Beatles albums from Germany. Any questions now? Question time. I love the albums. Hey. Somebody loves the album? No, I do. Mm. Okay, yeah, two of them. Okay. Three of them. Oh, three. And I here said, do you have any pressings of All Things Must Pass? I've had, not right now, but I have, I've had the UK uh, minus 1U, 1U on all the dead wax bef uh, twice now. And the UK 1970 pressing blows everything away in the world. Uh, that's the one you need to get on All Things Must Pass. Much better than the United States pressings. Brad Parnell said, I'm okay just stressing out over this coaching search for U of L. Bring in Bob Huggins. <laughs> Bob Huggins. That's who I want. I would go to games. Is he still alive? Yeah. Well, I thought that he would have health problems and whatnot. <sighs> and then do the last one. Okay. Parlo KRWD said, Parlogram ranks. The German press at number three after the Dutch Swedish pressings. What are we talking about? Not Magical Mystery Tour. I don't know. You just said German press. I think they're three. just. Must maybe he's talking about BC thirteen. Dutch. He, he ranks the Dutch uh, BC thirteen as the best sound all around sound. Mm -hmm. All right. What's next? Led Zeppelin. Let's Can we talk about Led Zeppelin for a second? He said yes, the BC-13. Yes, that's what I was talking about. Yes. So the BC-13, I have a Dutch box set up for sale on my Sticker Mania 2853 eBay store. It hardly played, excellent condition, all the albums, and it's up for sale for $700. Not here said my mom loved Led Zeppelin. That's good. Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. 
I'm in search for another RL Monarch pressing to go with this cover. But every time I see one, it's in very good condition. The, the excellent and near mint of a Monarch pressing with RLSS on both sides must all belong in private collections. I never see one up for sale anymore. The last one I sold for $2,500, I said on my last live stream, I predict in another year or so it will be a $5,000 album. In five years, will you still do YouTube? We'll see. Yes. Well, hopefully, I'm still building butcher covers. My uh, youngest son thinks I should start stockpiling East Coast butcher covers, buy them all, and have them ready for to peel over the next five years. Who's your youngest? The one named after you? Yes, the one named after me. All right. You saw my turquoise Led Zeppelin in my last few videos that went out in the mail this week for $3,333. I got a little bit of seller's remorse because I probably never have another Led Zeppelin with a turquoise lettering again. Another one went cute. off in rough shape the other day and it went for $2,000. That's cute. But mine was in beautiful shape. So this is a UK a six pressing of Led Zeppelin one with the orange lettering. Has a laminated cover. And they, they stopped using the plum label on, on this one here. I haven't listened to it yet, just got it in today. Talked about Led Zeppelin two. That's so cute. Got the Led Zeppelin three. This is a Germany early 70s pressing. The wheel moves in the middle, but it, it's not attached like the uh, USA and the UK are. And it's got the Atlantic label. It, I played this. It, it, this is one of the best sounding pressings of Led Zeppelin 3. Led Zeppelin 3, you got to get used to. It's a different... Um, style than the other uh, Led Zeppelin albums, but it's still a great album. Chris W. Oh, Chris W. said, I'm probably the only one who doesn't know anything about this stuff, but I support this sticker fan. LOL. All right, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I've studied this uh, Beatles for 45 years, and I'm catching up with Led Zeppelin as fast as I can. There are only two bands in collectability on music um, up in the stratosphere, and it's the Beatles and Led Zeppelin, in my opinion. All right, we got a promo for Led Zeppelin 3 album with Gallows Pole. What makes this real rare, this promo? It doesn't say stereo and mono on the label. Whoa. Hold on to it. It just says uh, S T. And then on the mono, it doesn't say ST. But usually they have printing that says stereo and mono. So this is the very first pressings of this promo record. And this, this uh, version mix has 11 seconds longer at the end than the one on the record. I've sold it once before, but I had stereo and mono on the other one I sold. This is rarer than that. All right, we're in the Led Zeppelin 4. That's as far as my expertise goes. I've listened to Physical Graffiti and Houses of the Holy, but my, I pretty much just concentrate on their first four albums. Talk about the plum label. Do you like graffiti? Physical Graffiti, yeah, it's a good double album. Not as good as the white album, but it's a good one. So not in general. So this is a first version, first pressing, from the uh, 1971 in the United Kingdom of Led Zeppelin IV. And it's unbelievable. The Porky Peco Duck mix really rocks. You can see Porky there. I'm sure not going to see it on the camera. And Peco Duck is right down there at the bottom in the dead wax. They were really rocking on this album. Black Dog and Rock and Roll. Unbelievable. 
And I still like to hear, listen to Stairway to Heaven. I haven't got burnt out on Stairway to Heaven. This is a U.S. version, promo white label of Led Zeppelin 4 I just got about a week ago. Notice the cover got the hype sticker affixed to the cover. That's what they did with promo cover. White label promo. Somebody's interested in this. I'm going to play test it on Monday and get back to him. He wants to know if it plays all the way through. Well, no problems. That's my Led Zeppelin rant. Yes, the old Led Zeppelin sold a few minutes ago. 10 CD box set thing. What was it? Led Zeppelin sealed 10 CD thing. Did you oh, the 10 CD for $110 probably? Yeah. Sold a Led Zeppelin CD box set. 10 CDs from the USA. I've also had the Japanese uh, version of that box set with the mini CDs. You remember when you sold like Spice Ice? I mean, Spice Girl Barbie dolls. I tried to sell Barbie dolls. They're real, they're too picky. <laughs> Does it have green hair? Do the are the legs still flexible? It just goes on and on, Barbie. <laughs> That's a tough collectible thing to get into. No more Barbies. I think I'll stick with Beetle Stones and Led Zeppelin. Except in Beetle Barbies, you get them. All right, a little bit of Rolling Stones. Then we'll get back to the Beatles. Give me a Rolling Stones segment. Oh my gosh, I've seen that album so many times. Sticky fan. Yes. All right, I bought a sealed Aftermath uh, last week, and I was afraid it was a reseal with a seam here. So I opened it up to see if the record had any play. And that was a good sign. It had the original inner sleeve. But it's got to let it bleed on there. So this would be a late 60s, like a 69 pressing of uh, Aftermath. I haven't listened to it yet, but it, it is in near mint, unplayed condition. These inner sleeves were kind of rough. There's one little scuff on there from the paper sleeve. That's why you want to put them in these MoFi plastic sleeves to protect them. Next on Rolling Stones, got another Sticky Fingers. I sold the last Sticky Fingers from Germany, first pressing, uh, mixed by Doug Sachs with a TML on the dead wax on both sides. Got a hold of another one. I sold one for a week ago for $199. I'm trying to convince Tom Port this is the sticky fingers he wants is the best pressing, but he still thinks the Monarch from the USA is better, but I disagree on that. This mix by um, Doug Sachs uh, outshines the USA pressing. My, and Michael Fremer uh, agrees with me on that. All right, go ahead. Well, let me do one yeah, more thing. Yeah. before we get into that. All right, you got the original um, inner sleeve from Germany, and you got the zipper that looks a little different than the USA zipper. And you got printing here, and the USA copies don't have that. One more Rolling Stones, and be done with Rolling Stones to get back to the Beatles. Finish this off. Exile on Main Street. This is a sealed. This, they got in trouble with the uh, returns on the Unipack. So the Unipack didn't last very long. So this is a gatefold cover. But it has the hype sticker. So it's an early uh, 1973 pressing of Exile on Main Street. It's up for uh, $277 on my eBay store. All right, any questions? All right, go ahead. Brad Parnell said, have you heard any of James McCartney's music? James McCartney? Oh, The, the Sun. Uh, just a couple songs. I've never listened to one of his own. Is it good? Does he, Brad, like it? Do you like it, Brad? And Daniel Castillo said, do you think Paul has become a has-been? 
Do you think he's become a has-been? That's what he's asking yeah. you. Do you think he's become a has-been? Paul McCartney? Yeah. yeah. No, he's a legend. <laughs> of the, they consider him now the uh, all, most all-around talented uh, rock musician to ever walk the planet Earth. How can he be a has-been? <laughs> yeah, do the thing next to you. Daniel Castillo said, I saw Paul's interview on Fallon. Fallon. Fallon comparing himself to Beyonce and Taylor Swift. Yeah, he tries to stay relevant when he did that song with uh, Rihanna and uh, oh, yeah. Mr. West, uh, 45 Seconds. But uh, song good. I don't know, though. The Beatles and the Wings uh, speaks for itself, I'd say. Paul McCartney, Wings, and the Beatles. Uh, what a amazing um, 15 years of music that um, always, he'll always be a legend. Hold on, do the next Brad. Brad Parnell said, yes, I think James is pretty good. He doesn't sound like his dad, like Julian does. Yeah. And yeah I, only, I saw Julian Lennon at the River Bend on his first tour, and he was pretty good there on his first album, but... Uh, I thought that that's when he was at his best there at the beginning in the 80s. All right, cool. Chris W. said music is timeless. Music is time. Paul McCartney's music is timeless. I mean, think about coming up. Think about live and let die. Think about maybe I'm amazed. Think about the Ram album. That's a, and that's all timeless. I, I bought a, a sealed... 1973 band on the run with the hype sticker in an auction a couple days ago. I'll have it for the next uh, live stream. Nice. Not here said, do you have anthology one, two, or three on vinyl? I've sold all those. Okay. If you're going to buy an anthology, a sealed uh, box set, or any of the anthologies, you want to get the UK version, not the USA, because the UK version sounds much better. All right, good. Daniel Castellio said, even. Andrew said he cringes at Paul's behavior today. Did he? Hmm. I think someone's being a hater. KRWD said, it's sad how poorly Julian Lennon was treated by his father. Yeah, that's sad. Um, it's sad. You, I, I agree, and he, he wasn't treated very good by uh, Yoko after John was uh, assassinated either. All right, we got us back to Beatles. We got a mid 70s sealed import of a collection of Beetle oldies. And I've never seen it before with this hype sticker before. The Beatles, a collection of oldies. I haven't asked Perry Cox about that, but it's got to be a rare hype sticker. And you know, that's where I got my name, Mr. Sticker Mania. It's a takeoff of Beetle Mania and hype stickers. This was imported uh, to New York, and then they uh, distributed them to re the best record stores all over the United States in the late 1970s. That's how you got all these amazing pressings. Well, a sealed 1977 love song. It's got a, a drill hole up there. It was supposed to be a promo, but it's got the embossed cover of the gold and it's got the hype sticker it says factory sealed for your protection and it's a textured cover that's hard to get them that one like that in this kind of condition and you notice that the um poster i don't know if i got here we do Hallelujah. all right here's the original look poster from 1968 and notice which two Beatles are predominant in the biggest? Ringo and John. Now look at this one. Notice who's the biggest by far now. Paul McCartney. He had the leverage that he made him change from the first position to the second position. That's pretty amazing. Do the dab on the oldies one. Hold on, don't take the oldies. Do the dab. Not Deborah. here said, wait, what? Do the dab first because it goes with the oldies. Deborah Yeagley said, back cover of oldies also reversed. On the back, it's reversed, yes. 
I think that's what she's talking about. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and, and this George looks pretty strange here. It doesn't even almost look like George Harrison. Well, that's what I'm telling you. I can't answer no But it is. All right. About to do the knot here. Not here. I went to this sushi place that had a roll called the Yoki and the John Lennon. A sushi place? Yeah. Got another sealed. I sold my last sealed. Uh, or in a shipping box, 2014 mono box set. And I just got another one in today. That's the original shipping box. The 2014 mono box set came in with the original foam inserts. And you've seen me pull it out one too many times. I'm going to do it unless you ask me to. Got a couple 45s in this week. Got this one today. This is a pretty rare, early 1964, white label promo of I'll Get You on Swan Records with the, the X's that are printed on the label and it has a date, 32664. So that's when they got this record in at the radio station. And then instead of She Loves You, they were pushing the B side, I'll Get You. It's, it's got no grooves on the back, one-sided, Promo record of I'll Get You. Never seen that before. Promotional copy. KRWD said, Frank, what is the price on the mono box set? $1,888. It is up on my Sticker Mania 2853 eBay store. I showed this in a short... Um, to get that down, kind of talk about my body. I did a short of this and somebody replied that I thought it was a big deal having the first pressings of the Beatles as a backup group on a commercial stock record. And somebody replied, so what? And I said, well, the what is the Beatles it was the Beatles, and they turned out to be uh, the all, the most all-around talented four musicians in a rock band that have ever walked the planet Earth. I said, that's the what. But this is the first pressing of My Bonnie from late 62 in Germany that has a German intro. And this is the second pressing from early 1963 that has a English intro. They did that because this was being imported to England, especially Brian Epstein's Liverpool record store, NEMS. And so they wanted to have an English intro for all the fans in England. So I have both pressing of the very first record that the Beatles were ever on. Not here, so do you have the White Album Super Deluxe? Uh, not currently. I have the CD box set, the Super Deluxe. Does he want to see it? It's in the other room. I don't know, I think we're ready. So this is uh, Tony Sheridan and the Beat Brothers. They didn't say Tony Sheridan and the Beatles because in Germany the Beatles uh, meant the same thing of a, as a men's private part. So they couldn't get away with that. So they called it Tony Sheridan and the Beat Brothers. But the Beat Brothers was the Beatles. All right, that's my My Bonnie episode. Sir. And I told you last and last one how the early My Bonnie and the Beat Brothers from USA sold for uh, $15,000 in very good plus condition. This is a 64 pressing that says the Beatles on it. There's only supposed to be 10 that exist in the world that right. says Tony Sheridan and the Beat Brothers in the United States because they destroyed most of them because they didn't sell at all. All right, what have I not shown? Rubber Soul Hot Cut. I didn't show that last time. You know what John Lennon, Imagine, German, UK, laminated cover. 
Finally got a rubber sole UK mono first press from England with a, a loud cut, a minus one, minus one. A lot of record buyers were complaining because it the, made the record skip. So a lot of them returned and they had to have Harry, Harry T. Moss recut it. And he couldn't do very good. And then they finally had Hazel Yardwood and she did a tremendous job on the minus five and the minus sixes. But this is a minus one, minus one, loud cut. Not here, said, yeah, I wanna see it. How much would it be? What's that? The thing they asked about. Oh, it's in my closet. Super dope. Oh, on the left side. All right, that's the rubber sole. This is the, I got this in today. A first press, Imagine, from Germany. Haven't listened to it yet. It's got the poster and the post postcard inside. A near mint Imagine that has JEMA for Germany on the label. The matrix is real hard to see. Looked at it earlier. Germans put a real small matrix on the records. A1, B1. Yeah, that's what you want to see. I'll show it. Look at your fingernails. I don't need you ripping any of this. Here's the White Album. The best box set to get of the White Album. The anniversary edition with the C6 CDs and has a Blu-ray. Has a 5.1 Atmos mix on the Blu-ray. Supposed to be a, I don't have a Blu-ray system, but it's supposed to be a ultimate way to hear the White Album in 5.1. It's up for sale on my eBay store at $277. I'm buying it. It's one of those uh, remix editions that actually has gone up in value because it's the only way to get the 5.1 mix of the White Album. So inside this Imagine, is the original poster. It's supposed to be a postcard. There's the postcard. John Lennon making fun of Paul and his sheep. They were going back and forth at each other on their albums at that time. How do you sleep? Too many people. Smile away. Uh, you guys know what the Lennon Imagine poster looks like. I have to listen to that. See if the Germans did a great job on the Imagine album. Also have the, what I think is the best uh, John Lennon album, Plastic Ono Band, 1970 in the Shrink from the USA. Brad Parnell said, John later said he wrote, how do, do you, sleep? you sleep about himself? You know, he said that, but listen to the lyrics. Him and George are there recording it, and you can tell they're snickering about Paul McCartney. And then Daniel Castellio said, well, Lennon and McCartney were worried about each other. George is smoking them with other albums. That's true. All things must pass. Uh, Extra texture, and there was one other one. Oh, well, of course, the Cloud Nine was later on. All right, we did the Led Zeppelin. We did the Beatles albums that I got in. Brad Parnell said Ringo had to finally tell George and enough. George and John enough with that, with all that stuff. Who said that, Ringo? Yeah. Yeah, Ringo was a peacemaker. But there was a time in the early 70s when uh, Ringo went to Paul McCartney's house on Cavendish Avenue, a block from Abbey Road, and Paul McCartney told him to leave. But, you know, they're best, best buddies now, but there was a time, uh, back off Boogaloo is all about uh, Ringo telling uh, 
McCartney to back off. George Harrison probably wrote that song for him too. George wrote a lot of songs he was uncredited for, for Ringo. How much for you to buy their drum set? What, R Ringo's drum set? That one. Uh, I don't know, probably millions of dollars. I think the uh, Indianapolis Colts own owner owns it. The, the drum set that was played on the... Uh, is his name. Hersey? Hersey. I oh, I, yeah. Ars Ars oh, Ars Ursa. Yeah. yeah, I think he owns the drum set that was played on uh, Ed Sullivan, February 9th, 1964. Can't even not hear comment. Not here, said I have back off Boogalooga. Booga. Boogaloo. Boogaloo on a 45 single. Great song. They play it in our music system there at the store. Still a great song that's being played every day. It don't come easy. I think Back Off Boogaloo is uh, kind of uh, aids better with, in the times than It Don't Come Easy. But Photograph's a masterpiece by uh, Ringo, and George wrote that for him. Daniel Castillo said McCartney admitted he's got a... Ego. Ego. Ego? <laughs> he's got the biggest egos in all of... Uh, rock history music. He said he admitted it in the Get Back documentary. But if he hadn't had that ego with the Beatles had recorded the White Album and Abbey Road and Let It Be, I kind of doubt it. Ooh, I want this. Even Ringo admitted uh, they'd be in the garden, his garden, and him and John just goofing off and they knew when the phone call rang and they knew what it was. Paul wanted him to go back to work. All right, are we, what are we at on time? We've been an hour and 10 minutes. We've been going, so I don't know if you want to talk about stuff you got coming in. You said All right, you purchase end. history. Finish I'm it off with good. what's coming. Told you about the butcher cover going off in four days. I'm going to try to get. I got a the scrapbook coming Monday. I have a Beatles New Beat 1964 guitar coming in its perfect condition with the box and the manual. Rockaway Records had one that was kind of very good condition, but I have a near mint one coming and uh, they didn't have the manual. I always think it's important. Like my, uh, somebody messaged me today about the Beatles uh, headphones made by Koss. They say they have one almost the same shape, but it doesn't have the warranty card and the instructions like mine has. It's in my bank vault, but uh, he said, I he said, I thought I was going to win it, but somebody outbid me at the last second. Of course, you know who it was. It was me. <laughs> I told you about the sealed band on the run coming. I have a Led Zeppelin Presence album from the late 70s coming, a promo. And I have Led Zeppelin, the visual... Uh, called The Visual Thing. It was a hardback book they sold on their 1969 tour of America. I have that coming. I've had that before. I had a set of Remco dolls come in the other day, three days ago, and they said it was in near mint condition in the original boxes with the plastic windows. I opened the package and I could tell right away it was a uh, reproduction boxes and they gave me a uh, I, I sent it back on return. But I mean, it's so obvious how they took an old box, original box over there in China, wherever they make these, and they make a real nice reproduction. It's hard to tell until you actually see them in your hand. And the inserts were attached inside the box. They were glued, and in the original boxes, the inserts uh, slid right out. So I run, right away I knew it wasn't the real deal. Um, I have a Beatles Love from 2006. Oh, I put it in here. No, I probably won't be able to find it. Beatles Love album. I got the whole press kit from the very first premiere of June 30th, 2006. Everything they gave out, the t-shirt and all the promo stuff for this very premiere in Las Vegas. I got that coming on Monday. So I'll put this with this album and it'll be a nice um, listing. I'll have the whole deal. 
Uh, I told you about the Sgt. Pepper 20th Anniversary 3D display I'm going to have next week. I told you about the BC-13 I got coming from Perry Cox with all sealed albums. Um, the very, it's like number 432. It's, it's uh, numbered on the front of the box. And I told you about the scrapbook. And I think those are pretty much my... One's coming in in the beginning of the week. So we'll do this again. Uh, unless that scrapbook's amazing, maybe we'll, we'll do one next Wednesday night. We'll try to do one next Wednesday night after uh, work, same time, 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. We'll do one, two next week, Wednesday and Saturday. So thanks for everybody uh, tuning in and be safe and have a nice week. This is a box thing. Kaya RWD said, Frank, that box said come in. Will, what will you list it at? I've already answered this, but I've already uh, listed it individually. I sold another uh, box set uh, with all sealed albums in the last 90 days, and I just relisted all the listings, but they'll all be identical. Perry Cox is real trustworthy. When he says they're all factory sealed and perfect, you can take it to the bank. Not here, say good night. Good night from Louisville, Kentucky. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye. Bye.